The problem, clearly stated, is a void of research on rhetorically situated, persuasive, and dialectical communication used in the work of academic advising in higher education. To consider what we know about this problem, we must begin with the big picture. As an industry, higher education, it's big business. Faculty and staff in all institutional contexts see evidences of this as business-like terms increasingly pervade the administrative and an academic vernacular, like uh, student success, persistence, retention, timely progress toward degree, accessible measures. The ubiquitous presence of this terminology is an indicator of intense pressure on the machine of higher education to be increasingly efficient and effective. Unlike a manufacturing environment, however, higher education relies almost exclusively on its human capital and its means of producing finished graduates. It's, they're not mere machinations, but a complex system of human interactions. Logically, each interaction can either support the institution's purpose or detract from this work. It stands to reason, therefore, that assets of the institution, for example, expertise, disciplinary knowledge, and sound research methods, these might all be used to deliberately examine and better understand each of these human interactions, including those in the world of academic advising. With regular opportunities to make substantive and meaningful contributions toward the holistic success of an institution's students, the work of academic advisors is particularly ripe for scholarly inquiry. True, the relatively young profession has been and is being examined through a variety of disciplinary lenses, but as of yet, I cannot find scholarship that rhetorically explores, analyzes, or describes the written artifacts proceeding from academic advising interactions. These would most likely include email follow-up proceeding from a face-to-face -face interaction. This study aims to launch such a line of inquiry and unlock the potential benefits of its findings. From its roots in antiquity, rhetoric and discourse have been foundational to the work of the university. Fast forward to today, and one will see that despite the knowledge academic advisors do glean from anecdote, intuition, and experience, without scholarly research of the type I've described, they operate at a deficit. This study benefits scholars, advisors, and students as we learn more about the use of persuasive arguments that may encourage students to pursue success, like embracing challenges, thinking logically, reasoning critically, communicating effectively, and more. Specifically, by investigating the persuasive or discursive presentation of technical content advising in artifacts, this study will, one, extend the reach of technical communication and rhetoric, by better representing its work in yet another realm of the modern work environment. Two, provide a baseline for future studies in the effectiveness of rhetorically situated advising recommendations. And three, offer research supported recommendations for improving the training of academic advising professionals when writing effective documentation. So far, I've tried to lay out the big picture and explain the benefits of this particular study in a smaller scale. Now, let's talk about the methodology. This study is a textual analysis. I use written artifacts of student advisor interactions. I took a convenient purposive sample of available advising documentation that was selected from an electronic database with approximately 387,000 records spanning almost 12 years of advising work. Those artifacts analyzed, they were emails, follow-up emails that documented the in-person advising appointment. Upon completion of the session's documentation, the way it works is that the emails go automatically from the electronic database application on behalf of the academic advisor, who is the writer, to their students, the recipients. From this pool of artifacts, they were purposefully selected to provide coverage of at least three different advisor's appointments with three similar freshman students who were all in varying stages of exploration prior to declaring an academic major. The advisors categorized the students according to the, the those stages of exploration, and I wanted to do an analysis and see if the language that was used um, lined up between advisors, and if it lined up with the kinds of students that they were working to assist. As recommended by Saldana, my analysis was a hand-coded textual analysis of the artifacts that I've just described. It consisted of two different cycles, and within each of those two cycles, I did 
two different kinds of qualitative um, coding. The first cycle had attribute coding so that I could begin to understand the different kinds of artifacts that I was talking about, or well, really the same kind of artifacts, but the different kinds of students. Then structural coding. Was it just a standard email? And I found that pretty much the politeness component was there, as you might expect in any written correspondence. The other methods that I found then were eclectic coding and focus coding. And in the focus coding, I expanded it to do axial coding as we talked about in class. This multimodal overlaying approach, um, I modified as I began to make more and more discoveries in the data. And because the artifacts um, were in PDF format, I found that with highlighters, I was able to make a whole lot of headway. So the things you've seen on the screen indicate the process that I went through over and over again, ultimately ending up with an axial scheme. So I'm gonna try and wrap this all up. And at the risk of being a little bit cheesy, I will still try to use this window of opportunity to provide a little bit of illumination on a topic that I'm just now really beginning to get. I have been a bit of a basket case and I've gotten things just a bit twisted up as I've sought to do this project. However, I think I've found the keys to success. Reading a lot, listening to the advice that I've been given, and refining over and over and over again the work that I'm doing. The coding that I have done has been illuminating. It's been helpful. It's been insightful. And um, the sky's the limit, to be perfectly honest. The key, after all, is knowing where we're headed, and that is to improve student success by expanding the literature, and technical communication and rhetoric has a lot to do with that. Who knows? Maybe you'll see this come to a dissertation near you soon.